Hello everybody and welcome to another edition of the Corporate Gamer Broadcast. I am your host, Corporate Gamer, and yes, it has been quite a while since I last streamed a game. Um, <clears throat> actually, last Tuesday was the last time that I streamed. Um, been tired and uh, yeah, been hectic work, so I haven't really had a chance to stream, but we are on a Friday night. Finally, the weekend is almost upon us and uh, yeah. I don't know if I want to stream with the big light on. Let's do that. No, I can't turn off that without... There we go. Um, yeah, so tonight I wanted to stream... Uh, continue the series, Crisis. The last in the series in the main storyline. I think there's another game, Crisis something, which is like either a side thing or a DLC or whatever, which I didn't really pay attention to. So I'm hoping that uh, things will go well. Hopefully the stream will stream well. I know I've had some technical issues in the past. I don't know why. It happens periodically where the game just doesn't... Yeah, it just doesn't do anything. Uh, there we go. Uh, yeah, so tonight we are going to be streaming uh, Crisis 3. Crisis 1 was okay. I, so I played Crisis 2 Remastered and I'm playing Crisis 3 Remastered. When I played Crisis 1, I did not have the Remastered. So yeah, it was pretty, you know, it was bare bones the way you expect it to be. It did look still look good considering the age of the game. Um, I found it meh the game was uneven uh the first half of the game i found was a lot better than the second half um crisis 2 was very um very point a to point b type of game could kind of so kind of like gears of war um it's pretty good actually before we do anything i know this is always going to be on because i restarted my computer okay there we go um so yeah um did i enjoy it yeah it wasn't bad i found that it dragged on a bit at the end not that it was a super long game or anything it just felt like the end just was either was really abrupt i expected more so i guess they had expected to do a crisis three but at the same time i found like the last quarter of the game was a little bit of a stretch in the sense that okay can we get this game done already but it wasn't that long of a game, actually. It took me, if I look in my files, uh, I don't see it here. I'll have to look it up. But it's, it was roughly around 10 or 15 hours. It wasn't 15 hours. So probably around 12, which is fine. Um, so we're going to be playing that. And before we start, I wanted to uh, let you guys know a bit about my, and I'm probably going to repeat it if there's more viewers, um, starting next Friday, or at least that's a tentative date, I'm probably going to be relaunching my Twitch cast. Um, I'm renaming it. So it's not really a relaunch. It's a, I'm starting a new Twitch cast. Uh, the CG podcast, uh, has been retired, um, mainly because it was uneven. I wasn't happy with it. Um, and I hadn't stream, I hadn't done one in ages and it had morphed. So it used to be an audio only podcast then I did only video and it was inconsistent. So this time I wanted to do something different. And also I added a lot of pressure on myself in terms of the kind of the kind of podcast it was. Like I was trying to talk about games or the news of the week. But there's not always a lot of news. And it wasn't necessarily news that I wanted to talk about per se. Sometimes it was just filler. So it didn't really feel authentic. And I didn't really feel that I was resolving an issue or adding anything to the podcast noise that's out there, right? This is everybody and their grandmother now has a Twitch cast, podcast, whatever you want to call it. So having said that, I wanted to do something different. And basically, the idea behind this is I wanted to make a podcast that was... That, it, that actually gets to know fellow streamers better. Um, 
not necessarily popular streamers, to be honest. Uh, maybe there might be some popular streamers, like some that have a lot of followers. But mainly it's to give exposure to the smaller streamers, get to know them better, get to understand them better, what makes them tick. Um, you know, I've been throughout my streaming career, um, I guess if you call that, although it's a very poor career, but it's a career nonetheless. Um, you know, I mostly follow, usually I follow smaller streams. And I always find the smaller streams are better to engage. Um, it's easier to, hey, Kenny, how's it going? So, yeah, I don't know how much you caught of that, but uh, I was um, starting next Friday, probably. Um, I'm going to start doing, um, re redoing my, starting a new Twitch cast um, because I'm retiring the CG podcast that I used to do. Because I used to find it was like, it was too all over the place. I tried to do, I, it was more testing the waters to see what would work and what wouldn't. Uh, for me anyways, it wasn't necessarily for the views or anything. It was just to know like, okay, who would be willing to, what would work for me? What format would work for me? And honestly, the, a Twitch cast would probably work better. And um, yeah, so the idea is going to be like wanting to interview smaller streamers. So it would be to give them exposure, regardless of what they do. Maybe sometimes it'll be, you no know, streamers with a little bit more view uh, followers. But in general, um, yeah, so the thing is, it's I have to make it so that it's the least amount of work for me. I know it sounds like I'm being lazy, but unfortunately, I just don't have the time anymore. I don't have the time to break things down, make you know, make a, make an audio version, edit the video version. I'm just going to do a Twitch cast and that's what you're going to get. Uh, <laughs> to, exactly. So, um, I need, I, I need to figure what my sweet spot is. And to be honest, streaming is part of my flow. So as long as I make it into, yeah, I'm not consistent with my streaming, but it's going to make me a little bit more, it's a little bit more, it's a little bit easier to fit that in my schedule then. And I also had toyed with the point of having a podcast once a month, not every week or every second week, but the way I was doing things like this would actually work in a monthly podcast if I would go that far, uh, because it would kind of, it would, it would make it so that, you know, it's, no matter when you listen to the podcast, it's not relevant per se. Like, it's not like news where you have to kind of, you know. Yeah, I could. Um, yeah, I could easily do that with Streamcast. Like, just, uh, uh, not Streamcast, uh, Streamlabs. To just, like, record the audio separately. But it, there's always editing to be done. And there's always little things you want to do. So, um, I just don't have the time. Like, you know... It's funny, everybody and their grandmother started a podcast. Like there's a lot of like celebrities that started podcasts like on during the pandemic. But they fucking have a team of a team of freaking producers and editors and whatever. And the average freaking podcast, let's be honest, like especially a small time podcast, like everybody does everything their own way, right? Like they, they do it on their own. They're the editor, they're the producer, <laughs> they're they're everything. So like yeah, it's all nice and dandy. That's like, oh, we started an audio podcast or we started a podcast and it's great. Yeah, okay. But at the same time, it's kind of like, you know, uh, you kind of have a team behind you, which I don't. And also, I, I wouldn't pay anybody to be on my stream. Like, I, I, no, I can't afford it. I just don't. <laughs> I don't have enough patrons or I don't. It, there's not enough money to flow to actually do that. So, um. Yeah, it, it, it would just be a stream just to have a conversation with somebody. And sometimes if it works out, you know, it could be a longer podcast. But if it's, you know, it doesn't, you see that there doesn't work out. Hey, it's going to be a 20 minute, half an hour podcast. That's fine. Or whatever the person can give me. Right. And it's going to be like, I have like a set of questions that I would probably ask them. But at the same time, we can divert from that. Like we can, we can have a conversation about anything. And it doesn't have to be about games. It doesn't have to be, it's to literally get to know um yeah well 
the number one thing about podcast, and the thing is, I always love, when I grew up, I always used to love talk radio. And by the way, um, hello, uh, Twin Stick Ninja. Apparently, you are a first-time chatter, <laughs> so welcome. Um, uh, when I grew up, I used to be a very big uh, talk radio kind of guy. I used to listen to sports on AM radio. I used to do listen to a lot of news on AM, AM radio. Now, I always like talk, but I just always hated the commercials. And that's basically, you know, where podcasts came in. It was talk radio, but without, for the most part, there's not any ads. Um, usually it's self-ads. Like, to be honest, I really like the way that Conan O'Brien does his, his, his podcast. Like, his ads are, you know, him doing the ad, but at the same time, he adds his humor to it. So it doesn't seem, like, as tedious. And you're actually looking forward to the ad as well because you're wondering what he's going to do with it. So, um you know, and again, yes, it's true that doesn't money doesn't equal quality, which is it's very true. Um, but at the same time, when you're limited in time, if I wanted to do something semi-professional, I would have to have at least another person. I would I would need to have a person to either edit edit, edit video, edit audio, or upload it to you know upload it to different systems like uh, the podcasts. And now also there's like, you know, before when I did, when I f did my first iteration of, by the way, I'm sorry, I'm supposed to be playing Crisis 3 and I'm just chatting away. <laughs> well then, this is the pre-podcast, I guess. But when I first started, there was Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, which nobody fucking looks at. Um, Spotify wasn't really a thing. That was like four or five years ago I had started my podcast. So yeah, that wasn't that wasn't a thing. So um, it wasn't really like you had, but now there's like a bunch of different sites you can, like yeah, I know it's based on the RSS feed, and you can just basically go to the different sites, register, and just put them in your feed, and you're good to go, like Stitcher and stuff like that. But there's so many fucking websites, like it's insane. And to this day, I mean. I'll be honest, Spotify, I can understand, but Spotify, I don't associate it with podcast. Yes, they've bought big names to be on their, on their, you know, their platform. Uh, you know, Joe Rogan is probably the best known guy. Um, they've gotten other ones, but I don't associate Spotify with podcasts. I associate uh, Spotify with music, whereas podcasts will always be in my, it's been ingrained because it's called podcasts. Um, it's it's been um, that's the way it's uh, it, it, it's ingrained in my brain. So for me, podcasts will always be Apple, unless they freaking close their doors, which I highly doubt. Right now, they're going to close the doors. Um, some people tried to change it to netcasts. That didn't really work. Which is true. It's more of a netcast at this point, more than a podcast, because you don't have to play it on on an iPod or an iPhone, uh, but it is what it is. And I really liked it. I think the first podcast I started listening to was This Week in Tech with Leo Laporte. And then I listened to a bunch of podcasts on his network. Then I let, I didn't, I didn't like his podcasts anymore. Now the one I listen probably the most is Conan O'Brien Needs a Friend, which is really, really good. And uh, I have a few gaming ones. I have Podcast Unlocked which I feel is probably the IGN podcast that's the least biased. They actually acknowledge like when Microsoft fucks up, whereas other podcasts like Beyond, they kind of like, they're not critical of Sony for whatever reason. Oh, and by the way, I don't know if you're still here, uh, Kenny, but B-U-T-T, -T, but um, you'd be happy to, to, say, to hear that... Um, uh, eh, that um, so Streamcord. I think it's Streamcord. Uh, let me see. I I'm sure you've seen the message if you have Streamcord on your. Uh, yeah, it's Streamcord. So <laughs> they sent out a message this morning, literally at nine forty this morning. Uh. 
so hey everyone ever since we started our journey on discord four years four years ago it has been streamcord's mission to connect to or unite to unite streamers and online communities for all around the world today we're announcing a further step in that mission streamcord nfts yes you read that right and then yada 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 why are you doing it literally that's what three hours six hours later Hi again, everyone. Unfortunately, due to severe backlash, we will be discontinuing StreamCord NFTs. We value our community's opinion and thank everyone who provided feedback. As compensation for the inconvenience, we would like to provide everyone with a one month of StreamCord Pro for free. <laughs> ah, this is... that That is insane. Anyways, um, so potentially you can get your free pro here, which I don't know if it's really worth it. I really haven't cared. I tried to use Streamcore, but yeah. I don't know if it was. I honestly don't know if it was. Like it was it was message in nine forty. It didn't say April Fools anywhere. Some people laughed, but I, I don't know. It didn't say April Fools anywhere and I didn't see that it was an April Fools joke, so yeah, I thought that, Kenny, you would have liked it because um, we know, uh, well, at least I know your stance on NFTs, uh, which is the right one. So I just found that hilarious. Um, all right. Well, uh, there we go. All right. Crisis 3. Let I have a feeling that it's going to have to ask for an update. Let's see if that's true. So we will be playing Crisis 3, which is the last main storyline. I think there's like a, a another game that's Crisis, but it's not it's not canon, I think. Anyways. Achieve what? Oh yeah. Yeah, you know what? I'll be honest. I'm not really a big fan of. I'm not a really big fan of um, April Fools at all. That's why, like today, I take everything with a grain of salt. It's just that it happens that it was on their server that they said that. I was just assuming that it was true, but <laughs> nice. Uh, adjust the brightness. I'm assuming the controls are exactly like in two. Uh, yeah, it's already adjusted. What do I need? Resume game. No campaign. New campaign. Recruit! Yeah, I'm gonna do recruit. Only because it's the first time I play the game. Uh, do you wish to play the tutorial? Do I? Last time the tutorial... Uh, yeah, I added them for whatever reason. I don't know why. And I it's on it's on mute, so I don't actually get the messages. I just Let me know if I'm uh, if the the game is too loud for you guys or it's overpowering my voice. Oh, was it? Okay. Yeah, I didn't bother looking on Twitter. I just I found it I found it funny. Listen to the Nanosuit tutorial broadcast systems for technical advice. Due to audio and visual impairment of the user, this nanosuit training simulation must only be initiated while in training mode and docked within a nanosuit maintenance cradle or other motion restricted chassis. Okay. Well there goes for reading it. Welcome to the nanosuit training simulation. Oh, does it? Okay. Training is divided into several subsections. I should have said no. Each subsection can be accessed individually. I should have said no. Here you will learn navigational control of your nanosuit. We call the nanosuit Battle Armor Perfected. But it's much more than that. No. The navigation panel gives you real-time tactical feedback 
on your surroundings. Now make your way through the assault course. Artificial muscles assist interaction with your environment. You can jump higher. You can climb further. Really? Like, this tutorial is fucking wasteless. I know the tutorial that was really bad was the one for Cyberpunk. That one took like fucking like an hour and a half to do. You can run fast. And it just like fucking kept going on and over and over and over again. With control slide. Let's hope it's not that long for this. Here you will learn how to handle weapons with your nano suit. your weapon sights. High definition very focal eye lenses give you unmatched accuracy. Targets are autocorrects on zoom. Cycle through nearby targets for maximum combat efficiency. Even with fast twitch recoil compensation, rapid fire is inaccurate. Use semi-auto to improve kill ratios. Customization allows for on the fly attachment swap out to adjust to changing battlefield okay. conditions. New attachments are automatically added to your inventory and are always available. Sure. Mount the scope to engage distant targets. Uh, oh, scope. Okay. Accelerated reflexes make switching to your secondary faster than a reload. Your visor will alert you to ammunition restock locations. All right. Telemetry integration allows active target aiming assistance. The nano suit offers only partial protection from withheld grenades. Throw them within four seconds. This tutorial is complete. Yay. Continued free practice is supported by this module. Okay, so where do I have to go? Oh. I have to go there. Okay, so this was really it's the same Here you will learn the fundamentals of nanosuit combat operations. All nanosuit functions require energy. Some functions drain energy faster than others. Energy is recovered automatically from multiple sources within the environment. Stand by for nanosuit function training. Armor mode deflects incoming fire. The more damage deflected, the greater the energy consumption. Okay, I can't move.
cloak refracts light around the nanosuit, making it practically invisible. The faster the movement, the more energy is required. Combine nanosuit modes dynamically to maintain combat advantage over your enemies. The nanosuit monitors cortisol stress hormones My God. to calculate observability. The threat level is communicated to you via your HUD stealth meter. Okay. Cloak mode provides silent kill opportunities. All right, finish the third tech section. Here we will cover advanced elements of nanosuit combat operations. By the way, I forgot to ask you, how are you doing, uh, Twin Stick Ninja? If Khan Academy was an FPS, yeah. Identify and tag targets. Uh, the tactical visor analyzes the battlefield topography, marking targets and points of interest. I don't have any more... Uh, I guess that wasn't my exercise. Computer system exploitation, or hacking, is another function of the tactical visor. Failed system exploitations will temporarily disable your nanosuit functions. Nanovision is a function of the tactical visor which provides full spectrum acuity. This gives enemies no place to hide, even in pitch black environments. Nanovision enabled. Nanovision is a highly advanced feature and consumes energy while active. The nanosuit strength augmentation allows rapid destruction of soft cover and power lifting of oversized objects. Nanovision enabled. Kick oversized objects to clear paths and kill enemies. Uh, how do you kick? Yeah, I never used this in the last game. I could have, but I never did. My stream looks fucking horrible. Welcome to the tutorial sandbox. It's skipping frames, I don't know why. Test out your nano suit abilities in complete safety. Combine nano suit modes dynamically to maintain combat advantage over your enemies. Special ammo, okay. Okay. Hack, apparently. How the fuck did I hack before? We call the nanosuit Battle Armor Perfected. With this tutorial,
We aim to perfect the soldier. Good luck out there. Sure. I'm sure you're you're really um Yeah, I didn't do anything in that fucking last part. I should have fucking skipped it. Twenty-three years ago, the alien Seth invaded our world. We stopped them. I stopped them. But the Cell Corporation seized the opportunity, stepping into the power vacuum, quickly growing in size and influence to the brink of world domination. Cell took us all by surprise. Even me. Ooh. They call me Prophet. And I'm the only one who knows what's coming. Cell are not the real threat to our world. The most powerful alien, the Alpha Seth, still lives. He showed me a glimpse of the future. Apparently in the future everybody looks either like the Doom guy or they look like Halo, Master Chief. They all have the same mask. Are you planning uh, on streaming, uh, Kenny? He knows what drives me, what I believe. That being a good soldier comes down to one thing, to one single question. What are you prepared to sacrifice? Remember me. When they came to me with the nano suit, I sacrificed Lawrence Barnes, the man I was. To become prophet. When my own flesh and blood held me back, I sacrificed that too. Replaced it like a spare part. Victory costs. Every time you pay a little more. I saw a glimpse of what's coming. And there was nothing left of me to stop it. Yeah, I don't know why my stream is skipping frames. Because it's fluid on my side. And apparently, according to Twitch, it's not... It's not Twitch. Or Streamlabs. the greatest combat machine fails... It's really what weird. What do we do then? Like, it feels like it's lagging. What do I, I would have to restart the, the game, the restart my computer. It's really weird. Yeah, but it, it, the worst part is it happens to me like once and then it won't do it like for, you know, for weeks. It can't be network. My network's fine. Roger that, Hunter 3. We got it covered. Nothing getting on this boat tonight. Over. Like uploading, I have like 50. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. Hardware extraction is a go. Good job. Bring it home. Yeah, something is up with my computer. I might actually restart after doing this.
Oh, whoa, easy! Friendlies! You remember friendlies. Psycho. Where's your nano suit? Cell skinned me. Skinned us all. You're the last one. It's all about that suit now. Take my back up. Dave, three to come out. Keep low. Move! Dave, bandit. Make the diversion. Profit, let's go. Romeo Actual, this is Romeo 1. Initiating burnout. Over. Copy that, Romeo 1. Well, he fell in the water. Where am I going? We've got to get you in there, inside the dome. There's a war starting. The Alpha Seth? No. Remember those guys <laughs> who shot you for the cave vaults in Siberia? The well, the thing about the thing about three, from what I can understand, the the first game apparently people said like, oh, there's different ways of doing an actual mission, which is kind of true technically, but there was like. They kind of geared you towards like doing the the sh guns all blazing type of thing. Stealth didn't really exist. Anyways, so there's like different checkpoints you were able to, uh, you know, like you couldn't just go in by one single path. You could have gone by multiple paths. A lot of people come like, like that. When they played the second one, the second one was more of a um, point A to point B. There was no really way that you could get out of a, of a mission you just had to go through it which that's what it, people complain apparently for this one they kind of took the best parts of one and two and they kind of made this which kind of fan service in a sense of trying to see i i don't know if that's true or not we'll see how that goes god knows how many years the guys who tore the nano suit from my flesh the guys who are going to do the same to you sell those guys oh forget it Warning. Where the fuck are these guys? Cell security AI. So what am I supposed to be doing? Take it, I'm supposed to go over there. It does look good though. Honestly, it looks a lot better than I, I thought it was. I know that the Crisis 2 looked a lot better in Remastered than it did in... Uh... So, welcome to those watching the stream. Hope that you guys are having a wonderful Friday. Um, yeah, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop right here and I'm going to restart my computer. I'm going to stop the stream, but I'll be right back. So, give me like five minutes. If I don't see you guys again, uh, you know... Hope that you guys have a wonderful weekend, but uh, I'll be right back. So I apologize for this. I want to make sure that it's fine. There's something funky going on with my computer, so I'll be right back. <laughs> 